where is context uh, in the world of unstructured data? Uh, context is everywhere but the text itself. Context is being in Germany. Context is being in 2015. Context is being you and me as professionals, not children or not, not, not uh, elderly people or, or not people on a playground. Um, context is being in the daytime, that, 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 that there's, there's everything in the world uh, that the environment is context in our world. Now, you say, okay, Bill, thanks. And, 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 and how is it that you understand what I'm speaking about? How is it you understand a conversation? Whenever you engage in a conversation with somebody, uh, it is assumed that you have context for that conversation to make sense. That's, and that's, that's something, again, we take for granted. It's something that uh, is normal, natural, and is part of being a human being. Now let's ask ourselves the question. So the question is, uh, how is it that the computer understands context? And the computer understands context if we have records and keys and attributes and indexes. But what if we just have a long string of data, like an email, or a string of data, like a phone conversation? And the answer is, we don't have context. That, that in order for the computer to understand uh, context, we, we need context. And so that leads us to, you say, oh, OK, Bill, this is kind of a, uh, I get the drift of what you're saying. How do we get context uh, in this world of unstructured data. Uh, well, we do so with some things called taxonomies and ontologies. And you say, OK, I've heard about taxonomies and ontologies. I'm not really clear what they are, where they came from, and, and how we use them uh, and whatnot. But, uh, but I'll, I'll take your word for it. So today I want to talk with you about uh, uh, taxonomies and ontologies. Now, I wanted to tell you before we begin uh, that taxonomies and ontologies are a form of data modeling. Um, uh, if you were to put data vault, uh, taxonomies, uh, third normal form, and uh, Ralph Kimball's dimensional modeling into a room, it would be the moral equivalent of putting cousins of a family in a room. If you've ever been at a family gathering and they're cousins that are in, in, the, in, in the room together and you, you took some time to look at the cousins, what would you notice? You would notice that there is a certain similarity among the cousins in terms of the facial structure, uh, typically in terms of the color of the hair, the color of the skin, the body characteristics. That it, it's obvious that there's a family resemblance among the cousins that are there at this family gathering. Well, the same thing is true with the modeling that we're going to be talking about, that data modeling, data vault modeling, Ralph Kimball's dimensional modeling, and taxonomies all have a common characteristic. They are recognizably part of the modeling process. At the same time, they are different. Just like if you have five or six cousins in the room, even though they have a family resemblance, they nevertheless have individual uh, distinctive characteristics as well. And so uh, today I want to introduce you to taxonomies and ontologies. And why do I want to do that? I want to do it because it is a form of data modeling. It's a form of data modeling that's peculiar to unstructured data. It's through the taxonomies and ontologies uh, that we take this stream of unstructured data and turn it from unstructured data into a form of recognizable, understandable information on which we can make business decisions from. So that then is the little conversation I wanted to have. I'd originally planned another presentation for, uh, uh, for the keynote today, but after uh, listening to the other presenters and having conversations at, uh, uh, at dinner time and, and over a glass of wine or two, uh, I decided that uh, uh, it would be a much more appropriate to have a focused uh, uh, presentation on, on data modeling for the unstructured world. So what in the world is a taxonomy? Well, uh, the simplest definition of a taxonomy is a taxonomy is nothing more than a list of related words. Now, I want to tell you, there's lots of ways relationships can occur, and there's lots of ways words can be related to each other, uh, but we're going to start simple here. Uh, so let's take a couple of simple taxonomies. Uh, uh, in the United States, we have states called Texas, New Mexico, Arizona, and Utah. Uh, there are countries in the world, the USA, Germany, France, uh, Spain, uh, the UK, etc., and so forth. Uh, boys' names, we have Bob, Bill, Dan, Joe, Hans, uh, uh, Steve, etc., and so forth. So so these are all simple taxonomies. Now, it doesn't take a genius to say, gee, Bill, uh, if I were to think about it and I were to think about language, aren't there an almost infinite number of ways of creating related lists of words? And infinite is a, is a large number. I, uh, um, I'm not sure infinite is the right number, uh, it, it, but, but for sure there's a lot of ways in which we can create taxonomies. And, um, some of them are going to be appropriate, some of them are not going to be appropriate, and, and we'll talk about the appropriateness of them. So anyway, that's what a taxonomy is. Then you say, okay, Bill, what, what's this thing called an ontology? And you say, well, let's take a look at what an ontology is. Here we have uh, countries, USA, England, France, and Spain. And one of our countries, the USA, has states of Texas, New Mexico, Colorado, and Utah. And Colorado, one of the states, has counties known as Douglas County, Larimer County, Jefferson County, uh, et cetera, and so forth. So we start to see relationships among the taxonomies. Now, there are other definitions of an ontology, but this is Bill Inman's simple-minded understanding of what an ontology is. It's a taxonomy for which there is a relationship uh, among the words in the taxonomy. 
Now, with any imagination at all, you can say, gee, Bill, thanks for telling me that a taxonomy may have interrelationships. Uh, I think I've seen this before in the world of computers, and I think I saw this a long time ago in something called a bill of material, and I think that, if I'm not mistaken, uh, it's very easy to get in an infinite loop, that I can, I can have one piece of data pointing over here, another piece of data pointing back over here, and if I don't be careful with my programming, I sit there and have a program that chases its tail. I go here to here to here to here to here to here to here, and, uh, and I never finish. And uh, if you made that observation, you're absolutely correct. One of the difficulties of trying to process taxonomies and ontologies is being uh, constantly aware of the fact that if you're not careful, uh, you can fall into some insidious traps. And this is, this is one of those traps. There's some other traps that are, that are out there as well, but I'm just going to point this one out as, as, as we go through. So that's what a taxonomy is. That's what an ontology is. And you say, gee, Bill, thanks for uh, telling me that. How does that relate to my unstructured data? What do I do with my ontology, and why does it uh, uh, give me an opportunity? Well, over here, I have something called ICD-9-21. Uh, this would be a classification of medical information. That would be my taxonomy. And I have some raw text, and I'm reading the raw text. And when I find in the raw text one of my terms, I give it a higher level classification. So from a mechanical standpoint, this is how I relate my taxonomy to my raw text. And you're going to say, um, uh, gee, Bill, that's, that's kind of interesting. What good does that do, do me? Well, what it good it does for you is this is one of the ways, not the only way, but this is one of the ways that unstructured data can indeed have uh, uh, have context applied to it. 